Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at headlines from our city, our state, and our country. We take a look at your comments, your ideas, your suggestions on how to best connect with each other in our city, Puerto Vallarta, as a community of English-speaking locals. Oh, that was all said in one breath, so my lungs must be getting better. We are still... I think we're still in COVID jail, although we're definitely on the way out. Today is Monday, June 27, and it's a pleasure to get together with you, as always, and share the latest and greatest. I hope everybody had a good weekend, and uh, I hope nobody... Oh, no. Luisa is in COVID jail. I am so sorry to hear that. Um, I wish a speedy recovery for you, that's for sure. Anyhow, we've been in COVID jail for for over a week now, and we'll tell you a little bit about how the weekend went in a little while. But first, as always, we welcome everyone that puts some time aside to get together in these broadcasts. It's very much appreciated. And if you're new to the broadcasts, feel free to let us know by writing the word new in your comment, and we'll give you a nice little welcome. And if you have something truly important that you wish to share with everyone, it helps a great deal if you add a capital letter Q at the beginning of your comment, and then we'll take a look at it during the second half of the broadcast. Today, as always, we have a selection of news, not a lot of stuff going on, or maybe a lot of the same stuff going on, uh, because, you know, the city's still looking for employees. The number of COVID cases is still increasing, and uh, the city improvements continue to improve. So some days I wake up thinking to myself, okay, are people getting bored of hearing the same news over and over, or are there other news going on? And I never have a proper answer for that. But what we do gather, we gather with the best intention to keep you connected, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Aye, and I should remember to take a breath every now and then. Let us get started with the news, and we'll take it from there and see what you've been up to and how your weekend was and how many television series did you watch and all that good stuff. Okay, I love this photo because unless you know where it was taken, it means very little. But here is the deal. Somewhere along the banks of the Rio Cuale, past Paso Ancho, there is this little colonia, and it is called Paso del Molino. There it is. And Paso del Molino is fascinating because if you look at the road, this is a road going down to... Uh, Moro Paraíso and whatnot. If you look at this, the road is on this side of the river, but if you look at the satellite version of this, there's a whole community on the other side of at that spot. And this is probably not a new photograph, but as I understand it, there is a good 200 or so people living there. Anyhow, 
getting to that other side has always been difficult because the only way to cross by car is by crossing over the river, uh, but the current needs to be low enough. And for people to be able to get from one side to the other, um, there needs to be an overhead bridge. And the one that was there prior to the hurricane last year was torn down. But the good news is that work is advancing to construct a ramp to get from one side of the river to the other. And this is, again, bound to benefit some 200 people living on the other side at Paso del Molino. I must confess that I've always been curious to cross over to the other side and walk those streets just to see what is there, what there is. And hopefully we'll be able to do that sometime in the near future. Of course, this is not the only improvement going on in the area. Um, the government is trying to do as much as possible on this end of the Rio Cuale from uh, the, the Libramiento and to points beyond so that people can benefit and not get um, isolated during the rain season. Um, moving right along, as I was saying earlier, this is going to sound like a broken record, but the number of COVID cases in the city continues to increase. Now we're looking at some 583 cases, but hospitalizations and deaths continue to be low. But again, speaking from firsthand experience, I'm grateful to have received my vaccines when they were available and cannot urge you enough to be proactive if you present any cold-like symptoms or fatigue. One week ago today, <clears throat> it was Monday, of course, and... Uh, one week ago today, I knew something was, was not right with this cold that I thought I was catching. I know, I knew that it was, I needed to get out and get tested. So that's what happened. I went out and got tested and a, a week ago tomorrow is when I received my diagnosis. And I'm happy to say that I am on the way out, uh, not on the way out. I, I wrote on the way out the other day and a friend told me, are you dying? No, no, no. I'm on the way out from getting COVID. I'm not dying, that's for sure. Um, but it was a very, very trying week for me. Now, I think I can almost smell something. Like my sense of smell is, I think it might be coming back, not entirely sure just yet. But seriously, one week of COVID is bad enough. But then you get into this stage, in case you haven't had it, um, of which you're thinking, okay, I feel good enough to go out for a little stroll, but I don't want to talk to anyone because I don't want to give this to anyone, but you're not even sure that you are contagious or not. And then there are people that say, well, not people, but there's research that says, you know, go get tested again to be certain that you're not contagious. And then there's research that I've read that says, you know, you may still continue to test positive for a while. And meanwhile, one is left thinking, okay, so am I a threat to society? Should I just stay home? Should I, what should one do? So that's how I spent my weekend. I had ambitious plans to go out for a nice, vigorous walk. And I thought, you no, know, maybe I should just continue to take it slow. And Saturday, I did very little. And yesterday, I did very little. But the bottom line is, um, even if it's not as bad as it used to be, COVID-19 continues to be a major damper because now one is left thinking, okay, the next dinner party that I get invited to, do I test or do I not? Do I go or do I not? We think that we're on our way back to normality, but all of a sudden these flu-like uh, cases are... Our major bummer. So I know I'm rambling about this, but again, it is important that we continue to take good care of ourselves. Um, if you know of anyone that is feeling even the slightest of symptoms, you know, it's not about getting yourself all worked up or anything. It's about having the certainty that you are okay or not. And certainty is now very inexpensive compared to before. Um, is as little as, you know, 260 pesos, or you can go to where you're getting uh, the free tests and whatnot. And that's, that's what I have to say. Uh, thank you very much for in indulging me that. Anyhow, moving right along, summer vacation season is around the corner, and there are still 
according to this news note, 9,000 jobs available in the city to be had, and yet people are not applying or the people that are applying are not being given the jobs. So the different business chambers are forced to find ways to find workers from elsewhere. The article, as we've come to expect, is not thorough and simply states that the chambers have not been able to pinpoint the reason why people are not applying for jobs. And one begins to beg the question, after all, there's so many times in which you can report that there are jobs available without getting into the meat of the matter. Um, we don't know if it's that the pay is not enough or that the people that are applying don't have the necessary skill set. I just can't put my finger on it, but please know that according to this, there are plenty of jobs to be had out there. So if you're looking for a job, go and search for one and apply for one, I suppose. Let's take a look at the weather just to see what we can expect for the beginning of this week. If a new season of Westworld is released and there's no one around who cares anymore, does it still emanate existential angst? Wow, that's a deep question. I'm not ready to even begin to understand that, but that's what Snarky Weather says this morning. Of course, we know that Westworld is a very successful HBO series, and I am seasons behind, so I cannot comment on this. What I can comment on, however, is the weather. It is 27 degrees right now. feels like 29. Humidity is at 69%, and our temperature for Fahrenheit devotees is 80 degrees at present time. Our weather forecast for today says it's going to be a humid and mostly cloudy day with a high of 31 and a low of 24. Tomorrow, Tuesday, will be a, a rainy day. We, ha we will have rain in the evening and overnight with a high of 30 and a low of 24. And Wednesday will be a rainy and humid day again with a high of 30 and a low of 24. And now let's move on to a couple of other headlines that we have. This first one just made me laugh so much. This is about the Via Recreativa, or recreational path that has opened in Fluvial on Sundays. And sometimes you have to laugh at the headlines. The headline reads, Still low participation of citizens in the recreational Sunday or something to that effect. Well, it's only been two weeks. I mean, seriously. Some people apparently argued in the article that there has been not enough promotion by authorities. And I know that Logan has been down with COVID as well. Otherwise, I'm sure he would be there in a heartbeat with his pooches. Of course, we are talking about an entire avenue in Fluvial closing down to vehicular traffic on Sunday mornings for citizens like you and I to be able to go out and recreate ourselves and have some fun being fit, walking or riding a bicycle or a skateboard or otherwise engaging with nature. Is it going to happen overnight that a lot of people are going to go? Of course not. I think we should be patient with this. And I just hope that authorities will be patient with this idea and wait for it to become a habit in the minds and the hearts of local people. I know that I will definitely be there this coming weekend because I'm hoping this weekend is going to be really wonderful. Why? Well, there's the first Saturdays at the museum, which we've been talking about, and I'm really excited about going back. And then there's Princesas Desesperadas, which I believe was canceled this past Saturday due to COVID. But Princesas Desesperadas, I have tickets for the show on Saturday. And this is this cult theatrical classic here in Puerto Vallarta that if you don't speak Spanish, you don't know much about, unfortunately. But it is a lot of fun. And of course, I want to be out walking among uh, the trees and finding a shady spot. Maybe I'll bring some crochet on Sunday and I'll just sit under a tree and watch people go by. But... Again, hopefully we will learn to appreciate the benefit of having these opportunities to enjoy ourselves in our bicycles or do any kind of exercise without having to worry about incoming traffic. 
Moving right along, um, my friend Celeste Innocenti alerted me of this activity she's put together at the Rio Cuale Cultural Center taking place this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This has to do with working with clay, building figurines with clay, and it is called the Deities of the River. In her own words, in this workshop, using clay, we will create original creatures while listening to myths and music from around the world about the river gods and goddesses. And then we will hide our little creatures in tree roots, under rocks, etc., around the isla as ofrendas or offerings and inspirations until the rains wash them away. And then Celeste says, for me, it is a way of bringing attention to the Centro Cultural, to the Cultural Center and its mission, combining art and ecology, and also maybe adding a little bit of magic. So this is an activity that is bilingual, and it is for people of all ages. Participation costs 300 pesos. It's all outdoors, and all proceeds will go to support the Cultural Center and its volunteers. And this is happening again this coming weekend on Saturday uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Hopefully, if you are one that loves the Cultural Center and the Isla, you will be interested in attending. Last but not least, we have an update about the Maria Islands, excuse me, which just a few months ago we were talking about at length. You may recall that the Maria Islands was the last penal colony in Mexico. It's a series of islands off the coast of Nayarit that were turned into an ecology park. And at the time, Mexico President Andres Manuel López Obrador was making a lot of noise about how they were going to be reopened to the public. And he even went there and inaugurated the experience on April 9th. And now, according to this news note, we learned that the Islas Marias could open to the public in a matter of three months. Apparently, the government is now busy securing ferries and setting up lodging opportunities for visitors, but no specific information is available at this time. Meanwhile, friends of mine and I uh, brought up a, a subject came up in our conversation again, which is that of the Chihuahua Pacifico train, the Chepe, the Copper Canyon train, which I'm always uh, happy to hear that it is in the bucket list of people that I know. And I keep thinking one of these days, one of these days we'll get on the Chihuahua Pacifico train and go and explore it. And if you don't know what this is about, um, I'll be happy to refresh your memory. We've talked about the Chepe before, and I will continue to praise El Chepe, uh, which is not to be confused with El Chapo, who is another character altogether. Anyhow, this is what we have for you today. Let me rewind the comment tape just to see what everybody is up to this morning. As always, it is a pleasure to read your good mornings. Um, let's see. Brian, I hope you got my message. Good morning to you. My message regarding um, the telephone number from my friend Francisco and his transportation services. Um, and let's see what else we have. Doo -dee -doo -doo -doo. Kelsey says, good morning, getting out of COVID jail today. Um, and I'm just wondering, I'm not questioning you, but how do we know when we get out of COVID jail? How can we actually know? I mean, other than having the certainty of another test, like I went out yesterday to pick up food from the, the Parrilla de Villa right around the corner. And I was very careful to keep my distance from people and not talk too much and stuff like that. But I, I wish I had the certainty that I can go out and restart my life, but I don't have it just yet. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, no. See, every time I hear about couples that are set put aside in the same home um, because one has COVID and the other one doesn't, uh, it, it is, it bums me out. Mihal, it's great to read you. I walked 
past your building yesterday and I was so tempted to shoot a short video and to go, yoo <laughs> but I didn't. But I miss you and I hope you guys are having fun in Canada. Um, Harold says, voice and face are synchronized today. I say, Shh, don't even talk about it because I don't want it to go wrong. We still have no idea why we get synchronized and out of sync from time to time. Um, let's see what else we have. What kind of activities go on in Puerto Vallarta for Day of the Dead? It's on my bucket list. Have I been watching too much Coco? No, not at all, Linda. I think that is a very fair question and and we'll be happy to entertain it. Um, Day of the Dead is... Puerto Vallarta has Day of the Dead activities uh, uh, or has had prior to the pandemic. I think, yes, this will be the first year in which things... I mean, unless we fuck it up between now and, and, and Day of the Dead, this would be the first year in which we would get the festival back. The festival includes all kinds of outdoor activities and, and parties and celebrations. There are the, the altars which one can visit. Uh, so there's, there's a fair amount of, or there used to be a fair amount of Day of the Dead activities in the city prior to COVID. So again, unless things get really ugly again, um, you can expect a lot of stores uh, setting up altars. You can expect outdoor festivities. You can expect parades along the Malecon, all kinds of things. But it is still June and we still have a few months to go. Let us keep our fingers crossed so that you and the rest of us can enjoy Day of the Dead. And Day of the Dead is definitely a bucket list item for anyone that wishes to immerse themselves in Mexican culture. Um, Betsy asks for a home COVID test, and I can answer that one. I haven't purchased them myself, but I do know that Farmacia Guadalajara sells them. Um, I think they are inexpensive. And um, I don't know many, much specifics about the tests and I don't know what kind of tests they are versus the really effective tests. So I'm, I'm a little ignorant on that. But um, one of my goals for this week is to become more knowledgeable as, you know, I'm going to be going to the theater this coming weekend. And I'm thinking to myself, well, do I test? Do I not test? So forth and so on. And of course, as I'm asking all these questions, my personal caretaker, even though she doesn't know she is, Kathy chimes in. As long as you wear a mask, you are preventing anyone from catching it from you. The recommendation change all the time, but wearing a mask protects others more than it protects you. Well, I am happy to protect other people from what I went through last week. And I recommend that everybody is out there wearing masks. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't know if this is legit or not, but I'm happy to go there. I'm told a feed of spicy foods will help kickstart the taste buds and reactivate smells. I'm happy to give that a go. I have plenty of chipotle in the refrigerator right now. <laughs> um, research is, I read, says Maggie. Most people are not contagious past day 10 in absence of symptoms. Thank you very much for that. Uh-oh, Kathy again. The main reason that recommendations on how long people will, with COVID are contagious change all the time is because the variants of COVID are changing all the time as well. That means that we really don't know how long we are contagious and as we don't know which variant we have. It's the uncertainty. I tell you, it kills me. Um... Oh, no, my goddaughter, Charlotte, has COVID. School here in Chicago says 14 days of quarantine, and she returns same than me. They don't even request testing again. I hope you're feeling better. Other thing, prepare to forget everything after COVID is ridiculous. Okay, I, I subscribe to that. Why not? Um, Brian wants to go on a train ride as well. I hear you. Uh, Chris uh, comments on the Chepe, took Chepe train to the Copper Canyon last February. It was an amazing trip. I so want to do it. It's not even funny. Um, 
Marie asks, Paco, do you think you may have picked up COVID at the meet and greet last week or contagious at that time? I am quite ill getting tested today and that get together was the last time I was out before becoming sick. Certainly not pointing any fingers, just trying to figure out the timeline if it is COVID. You know, Marie, I a part of me wishes to say yes. But then a part of me wishes to say no, because I worry, and maybe I'm exteriorizing my own feelings, I worry that we get too quick to jump to conclusions and point at places or point at people and point at circumstances. I mean, in my personal experience, it could have been a bus ride. It could have been... The, the meet and greet that we had at Whiskey Kitchen because of the timing. It could have been a sneeze that somebody had like when they were walking by me on the street. So um, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I go through a lot of struggle personally because I saw some friends over the weekend and a lot of friends got sick too and i can't help but to feel partially responsible and this brings up all kinds of feelings that i'm not ready to to clearly understand so i don't know that i'm helping or not helping um, all i can say is it's everywhere and I am constantly surprised at how many people I am hearing that are getting it. Thank God it's a lot milder than before. Um, but, um, but there you go. I've just rambled for a whole minute and I don't think I was helpful at all. But I don't know that I can be helpful on that. I hope you will take my comment for what it is. Um, boom, 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 boom. Let's see. It was so cool in our first week to walk areas we saw in your videos. Well, I'll tell you, Luisa, I am so itching to get back out there and walk and 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 take my camera and do what we used to do before we got sick. And hopefully we'll be able to do that soon. Maggie, thank you for a little bit of information. The home tests are antigen tests. They are more indicative of being contagious than PCR. PCR can be positive for a long time after illness. Thank you for that. Raymond wants to go on the Chihuahua Choo Choo as well. Um, and Dan or Kathy continue to add, as contagious as the new COVID variants are, trying to figure out where we got it is impossible. I hear you. You know, I mean, a, fr a friend of mine said to me, do you know where you got it? I ask only because I want to know of places to avoid. And I don't know that that's fair. You know, I mean, I know places to avoid. I'm not going to go to crowded discos in the middle of the night, but that's just common sense. Um, it's 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 complicated. You know, it, it's I don't know what to add to that. Joey, who is probably also convalescing, it's everywhere. We are bound to get it. We are all living our lives and going places. No guilt should be placed on anyone unless there was the intention of getting people sick, knowing you were sick. And I don't think any of us goes out with the desire to get anybody sick. So there you have it. Um, now my daughter's husband has tested positive. Guess the isolating was a fail. Well, if you were all in the same house or under the same roof, it must be very difficult to isolate, Alan. All I can say is to anyone that is doing, that is dealing with COVID right now, um, just just be very careful and go through the motion and pray for a speedy recovery and take care of yourselves. And this, of course, brings us to the end of today's Coffee and Headlines. Hang in there, guys. We have no idea where this is going. Um, I certainly don't. I am grateful that it's not as bad as two years ago or one year ago, and I hope you are too. Um, all I can say is hang in there. Enjoy yourselves um, the best as you can. Um, 
and and Marie, uh, trust me, I hear what you're saying, and and I lose sleep trying to figure figure it out. And for me, it's a balance of do I try to rack my brain trying to figure out where it came from, or do I try to come up with creative ways to move forward and learn from the experience and my wish for you and my wish for myself and for anyone that is dealing with COVID is that we learn to look forward with the best attitude we can. This is the beginning of the week. Let us have a good week. And remember, if you've been worried about being spied on you by your smartphone or your computer, remember the vacuum cleaner has been gathering dirt on you for years. And that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> Have a good week, everyone.